Hi. In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how I've used InfraNotice and ChatGPT to create a graph like this from a collection of visual images like this. Now, this particular workflow is personally important to me as a photographer with a very, very large body of work which spans multiple decades and hundreds of different places. And in my photographic practice, I am particularly interested in the pairing, juxtaposition, the sequencing of photos next to each other, either for an exhibition or for a book. Now, in the past, the only information that is automatically attached to at least digital images is the metadata, which contains basic facts like the location it was taken, the focal length, um, and the date. However, in my process of sequencing and, and pairing images, there's a lot more that I need to understand about the image besides these basic facts. For example, when you pair two images together, you're creating a conversation between these visual objects. And that conversation is, is made possible through the multiple dimensions and layers available in each of the images. And what I mean by that is not only can you relate images on uh, similarities or juxtapositions of composition or color or subject matter, but you can also relate based on themes or meta themes, the objects or peculiarities and, or symbolism within multiple images. But in order to do this, it requires a lot of effort to sit with the images and, and, and when you have a lot of them, it can be difficult to really have a full view of the entire body of work um, that allows you to pair the best images with the best images. And also, your awareness of the possible connections may be limited. Now, of course, I think it's really important to do this type of work because it helps you to understand um, what you're creating. However, this tool that I've created with InfraNotice is a fantastic way of supporting uh, a curatorial project of visual images. And in this video, I want to show you not only the power of this particular graph in this use case, but I want to walk through the steps that it took me to make this graph, how I went from this graph to this graph to this graph to this graph to this graph and ultimately arrived at this one. And I think that by going through this process of showing you the different ways that I used InfraNotice, uh, CSV, as well as ChatGPT in the pro entire process, I can demonstrate a powerful way of thinking with, with this tool. Because as I work with different members of our community and users from a variety of use cases, I often notice that there is a steep learning curve with InfraNotice, and it oftentimes requires uh, a process of working through multiple iterations of the data that you have to finally arrive at a importing process and an organizational structure for the information that can create a graph which is suited for your purposes. And so we'll get started with uh, the CSV that I created from uh, a sample of images from a particular project of mine. Now the CSV that I had, um, my thought process was to organize the pictures as rows and give them different, uh, give them a link, um, give it a project name using the at mention, give the image a name using the at mention, and then um, listing some of the basic data about the photo. And then I went and I uh, added some more information such as a basic image description, some little details about the photo, possible synchronicities, and then the, the description of the photo from multiple different perspectives. Now I, arrived, I got to this um, by using uh, ChatGPT. Now at first I, uh, I created a pretty long prompt that I worked through, um, which helped, the, uh, helped to organize the response um, so that it gives me a very detailed uh, perspective uh, from all of those different perspectives. Um, and it gave it to me in this type of uh, narrative flow. Now I think it's worth mentioning that there's a powerful integration happening between ChatGPT and InfraNotice in this case because ChatGPT is able to visually explore the image and analyze it and describe it from these multiple perspectives. And why this is important is because each of these perspectives 
is giving um, a more uh, a particularly nuanced understanding of the image. Now, having these different perspectives would be powerful enough for me to better understand my images, but um, with so many different perspectives for a number of different photos, it can be very overwhelming to be able to um, synthesize and digest the information to, and to really understand the diverse and subtly uh, different but rich uh, descriptions of the photos. But this is where InfraNotice comes in because as a text network analysis tool, it can plot all of this information in a nonlinear visual way and it could really take advantage of the similarities and differences made obvious by these multiple perspectives in how it clusters together uh, all of the descriptions by um, on, on the basis of their node and their co-occurrence. And so I took this, 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 this uh, work and I uh, completed a CSV with all of the information. Um, and, uh, and that's how I got this first graph. And so you can see that the graph is made up of uh, all of these different statements, which is essentially um, each row is considered a statement. And then uh, within a each aspect of the statement, it, it is graphed on the basis of co-occurrence. Now, there was a couple issues with this graph. First, I had an intuition that I wanted to be able to use the at mention name of each of the images <clears throat> in order to more prominently see the names of the images in the graph and to use them as an organizational feature of the graph. But as you can see, um, none of these image names are readily available except for perhaps COVID Christmas. And part of the reason this is happening is because the name of the tag when sent in as a row is attached, to, is attached to the row as a statement, but in this case, our statements are so large that our chunking algorithms split them up into multiple statements. And so in, in all actuality, the name of the, of the photograph is only directly connected to one part of the statement and not actually connected to the entire statement. Furthermore, um, the graph is a bit too complex and too dense. And even though I, I kind of played around with this and tested how the, used a number of different um, graph reduction and analysis methods, um, I kind of realized that there is an overwhelming amount of text with a lot of filler language, which really uh, doesn't allow me to see the type of conceptual uh, clustering on multiple levels of the photograph. And so I'm left with this very dense graph that has too, mu too much um, extemporaneous information and it doesn't actually give me enough clarity. And so what I, the first step that I took in, in taking care of this was I, I decided that I would use the InfraNotice identify entity feature in the import. And that's how I got this graph, which is the same in every single way, except for, as you can see, in the statements, there are some words that are double bracketed, and that's because it is identifying those as entities, which is a good start because what I want to be happening here is I, I want to extract from these statements conceptual entities that are particularly relevant and will help me to identify uh, commonalities and similarities um, across different images. Uh, for example, um, in this case right here, uh, clear blue sky, maybe I want that as an entire entity because it is a particular nuance of the sky. Or um, in the case of, let's see, or even something as simple as uh, rocky path, right? Rocky path and even maybe rocky path and dense greenery as a, as a, as a combination. And so inside of all these really long narrative descriptions, there's these pockets of inf conceptual information that are oftentimes more than just one word. And I want to be able to capture those and, 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 and create a graph based on these, um, these larger concepts in hopes of finding uh, resonances of similar concepts from across photos. 
And so I started to try to do that here with uh, uh, using infer notice to extract the entities in the um, in the import process. And like I said, it mostly it, as good as it is, it's it's not as uh, powerful and, and as steerable as I would like it to be. And it also um, catches far less concepts than I than I than I would hope for it to capture. Um, and in most cases, the concepts are just singular words. Although you can see some examples of double words, like everyday life being um, a entity, which is good because I, I, I want every everyday life is understood conceptually as an entity um, and not as two different nodes of everyday and life. And so I kind of got there with this graph, but I wasn't fully there. And so the next step of what I wanted to do was I figured that I can ask ChatGPT to take the uh, full information for each photograph and go through a process of tagging it and, and, um, and reformatting it. And so uh, that's what I got here, which is the type of statements that I really wanted uh, to get, where you can see that there is uh, a bit more expansiveness to and specificity to each of the concepts. And so um, that was a good step. And actually, before I continue, um, I want to make a point of another thing that I was kind of dissatisfied with um, with this graph, which is, um, as you can see in, in this in this current structuring of the CSV, um, each of the photos is a row, and the various aspects or dimensions of the photo are columns. But that presents a problem that I was trying to figure out how to overcome because as much as I want to see all of this information um, and I want to have it in the graph to be able to work with it, I also want the ability to turn the columns on and off. And there isn't a particularly easy way to do that currently with InfraNotice. Um, you can set columns as tags um, and filter by tags, but in the case of all of these perspectives, the values for the tags are all different. So in fact, I, if I was filtering by art critic, I would be choosing between all of the different values of art critic. Now that style of filtering would work for this over here, where there is a, um, a set amount of uh, choices. So for example, I can, I can create statements that are tagged by orientation and then I only have two choices of uh, horizontal or landscape um, and vertical or portrait. And so the filtering of this allows a more distinct uh, way of filtering out the, the objects. And so the organization of the CSV was a problem and I couldn't quite figure out how to fix it in order to be able to um, dynamically include or not include um, various perspectives or descriptions of the photo inside of the graph at any one time. And so I actually stumbled upon a happy little accident when I was creating these concepts. I wanted to make it easier to transfer it to a CSV and so I asked it to structure it in a chart in tabular format. And it gave it to me like this. And I was going to ask for it to reformat it so it matched my current CSV until I realized that this is actually something that, uh, a, a format that would work to achieve my, my, my purposes. And so what that looks like is, uh, is, is instead of the CSV being organized using the rows for images, I, transpo I kind of transpose it. The images are still rows, but I, create a individual row for every single dimension of the photo. So instead of having this image with multiple columns associated with it, I have this image on multiple levels with the tagged images, uh, with, with, the, with the conceptual tags, and then the image information tags. And so taking this chart using these tags, I brought it into InfraNotice and I kind of got what I expected, which is this graph right here. And this graph can be kind of helpful because it is a more uh, useful and um, 
uh, immediately, intuitively um, helpful graph because it's more distinct and separated. But in its separateness and in its um, in its very distinct clustering, it actually doesn't achieve the purposes that I want because there isn't as much overlap between these terms. And I kind of knew that would be the case because it's graphing each of these concepts in their entirety. So this entire concept right here is one node. And the chances of multiple images having that specific description as a tag and therefore having a connection between images is very, very unlikely. However, not completely unlikely because as you can see, we start to see um, kind of this overlap that both this image, Blue Bayou, and Joshua Close, both have an overlap of celebration of everyday moments. And in a way, that was a good sign for me to see that I'm, um, I'm going in the right direction. And you can say the same thing here, natural soft lighting. And so you can see that the graph is beginning to allow me to um, visually compare the descriptions of photos on multiple levels, and not just you know the the aspect of lighting, but also the aspect of a theme. Um, and so we were beginning to get beginning to get there, um, but it still wasn't quite it because the concepts as they are currently graphed um, do not allow the image descriptions to interact in network form as richly as I would like it to. And so what I decided to do was to have two levels of entity creation. And so the first level of entity creation is that one that I used um, ChatGPT for. So I, I take the initial uh, description that it gave me for every single image um, that I gave to it. Um, as you can see, I give it an image and it gives me the full description. And I think it's actually, as a side note, it's worth mentioning um, the, 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 the idea of the prompt here um, as just a prompting technique, uh, because the order that it gives me the information is particularly important. It, first, I ask it to give, it to give me the description, and the description kind of sets the stage, and I want it to um, be outputting as many words just about the basics of the photo to kind of set the linguistic landscape. And then... I force it to become aware of some smaller details by asking it to point out uh, particular details that may not seem important but could have significance. Um, and so it's going to pick up even more stuff. And then I ask it to find some possible synchronicities by examining the photo um, on a, a, a number of different levels, seeing objects as more than just what they appear but also potentially their symbolic value. And so by asking for it to do this stuff first, I am expanding the, the linguistic landscape that it's operating in for it then to approach each of the perspectives with a, a more fuller awareness of every little detail in the image instead of just its immediate um, awareness of the, of the image. So uh, we backtracked a little bit, but we have each image with the full narrative, and then we created the, the concepts and that's what we graphed, and that's what we're sending to the graph, um, and that's how we got here. But what I then did to get a more um, connected graph was I had InfraNotice on top of these existing double-bracketed entities. I had InfraNotice identify entities within them, and so you can see that's what's happening here. For example, childhood exuberance was the entity identified by ChatGPT, and then childhood is an entity within that entity. And there's multiple levels of this. So you see it's also restorative effects of natural environment was the bigger entity created by ChatGPT, and then natural environment is the entity within that entity. And that worked out really quite well, um, because now we can see a, a much different uh, level of connection between the, between the graph, because when we identify the entities within the entities, there's a higher likelihood that there will be 
an overlap between them. And so in this case, you see there's connections for something like natural environment or restorative, which connects multiple ones of them. And, um, and I mean, even when I initially graphed, uh, created this graph, and I saw right in the center between these four images, joy, it was kind of this, this um, confirmation of, yeah, I recognize these images, um, and I know that they all kind of contain that. And so it's, it's very cool for um, the system to kind of have noticed that and have it be the central idea um, on top of all the other nuanced ideas that are not near, uh, not near the surface. So um, I did this test with uh, just four images, and then I moved it and imported all of the different images. Um, and I moved it to import all the different images. And, and I got this graph. And the last final thing I did was I um, added these aspects right here. Um, and so just to show you um, the process, I'll kind of go through it, um, a full import process. So I'll, I'll take uh, the CSV. And in, in this case, I have the first page, which is asking me which columns do I want to have sent to the graph. And so I'm going to choose to send the link to the graph so that it's available for me to view the image. I'm going to send the name uh, because this is the primary top level organizational um, uh, structure that I want for the graph. And I'm going to select the attributes. And that's it. However, within the first page, I'm going to go to Show Advanced Settings, and I'm going to choose to superlink the name to um, each of the things just to ensure that it is connect the name is connected to all the values. And I'm going to choose to build a knowledge graph not just from the words, but from the words and entities in the graph. And that's the, that's the option that um, is telling InfraNotice to find the entities within the entities that I've already created. I'll go to next, and this is where I'm able to choose the tags that I want for the image. Uh, and so we will tag it with the section. And so the section is the, the different perspectives. We have uh, a technical description, little details, synchronicities, and then the perspective description of the photo from art critic, photographer, historian, psychologist, anthropologist, writer, and semiotician. And then I'm also going to use all of these basic pieces of information to tag each image. And I will go to advanced settings and I will also choose to connect the date to the timestamp functionality. And now we are ready. And so we'll go and create the graph. And that's how I went about <clears throat> getting to this final graph. Okay, so once we have the, the graph imported, you can see that there's still some work to do because the graph is still very dense. But we can identify a number of things that are right about this graph. One, we can see right away that there, it's organized by photos, which um, we can identify with the diamond node um, format and the at, and I can see pretty clearly where all of the images are um, as clusters. Um, and we can also filter by all sorts of things. So I can see which images are from 2019 versus 2023. Um, I can see which images I identified as uh, candid versus documentary. Um, and I can even see uh, images that are horizontal versus, and I can look at only the anthropologist insight for all of the images. And right away, I mean, even where we're at right now um, is a, a great point to begin to uh, understand the common themes. Uh, but if I wanted to uh, reduce the graph even more, um, there's a couple of steps that I can take. And one of my favorite is to use the reveal underlying ideas feature, because I think that this is uh, particularly interesting to be slicing off the top of the graph, the most, uh, the most influential concepts to see um, what is at the foundation of it, which ideas um, are underlying and are not immediately obvious. 
um, that are actually quite interestingly connected to the relevance and significance of the bigger ideas. Now, one thing to take note of is if I go ahead and I start reveal, revealing underlying ideas, right away I can see that um, some of the picture names are going to be the most influential concepts. And I don't want to get rid of those. And so I'm going to temporarily disable them by coming up to this over this filter and choosing to only show concepts. And I could choose to only show mentions, but in this case, I'm going to choose to show only concepts. And what that's going to do is it's going to, it's going to remove the visibility of the cons uh, the mention nodes, which are the names while still maintaining the same structure. And so the graph, in terms of its structure and how uh, the proximity of all the, all the different nodes did not change at all. In fact, it's still kind of held together uh, with the organi organizational structure of the, the, the image names, but they're just no longer shown on the graph and they're not being um, manipulated. And so now we can see that the most influential concepts currently nature, suggest, symbolize, light, um, there's no image names in there. And so what I like to do is I like to uh, iteratively reveal underlying ideas. And um, when I'm doing this on my own, I do a much deeper process of examining the, the details and stats and blind spots at each level. Um, but in this case, I'll kind of go through it quickly and, and just take note of, uh, of the different clusters and, 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 the, and the process and steps and changes that take place uh, e over each step and kind of have a um, increasingly more granular, non-obvious understanding of my body of work, which is currently here, shown in, in text form. So reveal underlying ideas and it will remove this, the, those top four and now more stuff will come up. So we have exploration, setting, man, green, indicating personal connection, attire, I can reveal underlying ideas again. And each point kind of making note of the clusters. Maybe if I want to come into blind spots and look at the conceptual gateways that change. And so the conceptual gateways are the entry points to the conversation. So I can maybe check in and see what's there. I can look at the trends and see some of the emerging uh, keywords, the most, ad uh, the most recently added with the highest local influence. Um, I can reveal them again. And I'm going to keep on doing this. Uh, and what I'm doing is I'm looking at this topical diversity. There's a couple different indications of where I might stop. Um, I can go all the way to the very bottom, revealing underlying ideas until there's no more to reveal. Or I can kind of get to a point where the graph is relatively sparse and the topical diversity is high. And so we can see as we reveal the underlying ideas again, the topical diversity um, remains the same. Uh, relatively, if I reveal them again, it might move up a bit, still doesn't move up. Topical diversity, reveal them again, making note of the different influential concepts and the, and the naming of the clusters to kind of keep an idea of what, you know, what level we're at. And now we can see the topical diversity just moved up again. Um, and so now we're at very high. And what I'm aware of having done this many times is as I continue to reveal underlying ideas, um, it will probably drop back down again um, because at a certain point the the structure of the graph sometimes is going to kind of modulate between diverse and focused uh, based on the nodes that are currently there um, connecting the clusters and 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 influencing whether or not the graph is uh, focused or diverse but let me do it again uh, reveal underlying ideas still didn't move I can go one more time, still didn't move, maybe I'll go one more time, and then we see it drop down. And so I can continue going all the way until the very end, or I can say, actually, I think this is probably uh, the most diverse it was going to get, the one step before, and so I can put them back in. And so now, here we are. Um, it's a way more sparse graph. Um, it's a little bit easier to manage than the initial graph, and also it's going to be a graph that contains... Uh, the aspects of the description that we generated, you know, earlier in the CSV that are more subtle, less obvious um, beneath the surface, but um, but still 
indicative of certain connections and potential um, similarities or overlaps between the images. And what ties this all together now is I bring the, the names of the photos or the at mentions back in and now we can see the graph organized by image with a reduced amount of node showing the underlying ideas in this. And if I want to clean up a little bit more, maybe I want to remove setting. So I'll hide setting. I feel like that may not be very important. And so now I'm at a point where I can maybe start working with this and I can start uh, figuring out, are there connections between photos uh, that I'm unaware of? And what I think is really cool about this particular workflow and the structure of the CSV is now I can go through here and I can say, okay, I want to see, I want to look at all the images um, in terms of the little details of the image. And so now I can see, okay, this is interesting. Let's see, what, what am I finding here? Um, I see, for example, I mean, even just this right here, day and daytime, or uh, patterned. Pattern's interesting. So I have a connection between these two images. I also, let's see, um, railing. And there's something interesting about the fact that, like, for example, because, um, in, because we're using multiple filters, the actual structure of the graph, which locates the nodes using the force al atlas algorithm, is putting words close to other words, not necessarily if they're connected, but because of how each of the other nodes in the fullness of the graph is attracting or repulsing. And so we can see that even though day and daytime are not actually connected with a line, they are in proximity to each other. Or um, something like, for some reason, and maybe there's you know insight to get from here, but in some reason, like history and intimacy is is close to one another. Um, let's see, uh, outfit, multiple outfit. So, um, comfort. So maybe there's nothing there in the little details, or maybe there's more I can find, but. I can also go and say, let me see what are the possible synchronicities that I'd identified. Um, in this case, uh, we have fleeting and relaxed next to each other. They're not connected, but you know, perhaps, perhaps there's something there, um, and I can check. So I can see, okay, fleeting. Um, Relaxed is connected, or maybe I want to do yeah, let's just go ahead and see this. So fleeting is near uh, Joshua, which I can then look at the image. And it's also near higher consciousness, which I can then look at the image. And maybe I can see something that has similarities between the two of them. Or maybe it's um, not exactly what I want. And so I can go back and I can say, okay, I want to see all horizontal images. And I want to see the psychologist connection. And so now I'm seeing horizontal images with another filter of the psychologist insight. And so I can see um, love, for example, is connected to these two images. Uh, and maybe there's an interesting uh, connection between the two of them that I can explore. And so... Um, Yes, yeah, so that's how I would go ahead and, and use the various um, perspectives as I kind of cycle through all of the different versions of, of the text narrative or text description of these, uh, of these images. Um, and I can do a lot more analysis, uh, like reducing the graph 
after going to the most, uh, after reducing down to the most underlying ideas, I can reduce it further to see what are the most central of the underlying ideas. And I think, of course, it's going to be uh, the names. And so I can go ahead and I can hide this again. And let's go ahead and let me only show the concepts. And then let me reduce it down to, and what I'm doing here is I'm increasing the, the, the filter for um, which nodes to show based on the number of connections. And so as I increase it, it's only going to show nodes that are more connected. And so I could see that at the, and yeah, this is a pretty good, um, you know, foundational understanding of my images, which is uh, the impact and intimacy of human relationships. And in fact, I quite, um, I kind of quite like the simplicity uh, of that way of saying it. Um, you know, I can also, if I want, I can uh, bring back the image names. I can maybe even bring back uh, all of the nodes and reload the graph so that the very many nodes that are in here uh, show properly. And I can choose to organize uh, or display it based on time range. So let me only see the images from 2021 to 2022 or vice versa. Now, of course, I can also do that because these are tags. I can also do this with a tag, but if the time ranges were more granular, um, like down to the month, which I could include, um, then that would be a way of having a more granular understanding of the images. Uh, one last thing to do, and I know I kind of already brought back all of the nodes, which I wouldn't typically do. So let's just go and show the most central nodes this way. Um, as you can see, it, it ultimately shows me the names of the images. And so if we go back, show the concepts only, and then reduce the graph down to the most central ideas, I can see, you know, these are some of the most central ideas, maybe show a little bit more, and then I can look at the blind spots here between the different aspects of my images. And some of them aren't going to show because they're hidden from the graph. Um, but you can see how using multiple features at once allows you to see the graph on different levels. Now I can reset that. And then the last thing that I will do is demonstrate one more feature of the graph that's connected to the date, which is the dynamic graph view, which may not be particularly impressive with because uh, in this case, because I don't have very many dates. I think there's only a different, like six different years right now, but I go to this uh, aspect right here, dynamic graph settings, and I'm going to choose um, between whether I want to highlight the active statement or if I want to filter the active statement. So let's go with filter. I'm going to activate that. And you can see that currently it's at the very top and it's showing me only the nodes um, and connections for that particular statement. And if I want, I, I can show more names for the nodes by going to the settings, graph display, and lowering the threshold for names. And so now I can actively see all of the names that are currently showing. And then I can go ahead and I can hit play. And it's going to go through each of the uh, statements in chronological order. And it's going to show me uh, the various perspectives and descriptions of the photos um, as they evolve over time. And so this may be of use to me if I want to understand uh, the trajectory of, my, of the themes and um, contents of my work. Uh, I can turn on the high-level ideas, and then I can see it kind of real-time trying to make sense of the different clusters. Uh, and I can even stop it, you know, if it's too slow, if it's going too fast, I can stop it and I can manually um, activate 
and manually go through it to maybe more pinpoint a certain area and focus on it and say, all right, let me stop right here and analyze that. And of course, this also too could be layered with the filters. So only see this particular filter um, at that particular time. I need to play it again. So. Whoops, I think I clicked too many times. Made too many changes at once. Um, but as it was. Um, so that is a overview of this new workflow. Uh, I hope that going through the process of showing how I went from this uh, library of images to this, uh, uh, to multiple versions of the graph, to walk through the different uh, versions of the graph itself, to ultimately get to a point that is very useful for me um, to better understand a library of uh, visual art. Uh, please, if this was helpful, uh, please share uh, your thoughts or questions or comments, um, and definitely subscribe to InfraNotice. We're hoping to make uh, more in-depth content and, and provide uh, new videos every day. So thank you and look forward to uh, seeing you inside.